Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can automatically create a calendar and color code of the months like this one here. So if I select a different year like 2022, I've got this set up so that anything that is not in 2022 will be colored yellow and then each month has its own colors. So if I go back to 23, 23 starts on the first Sunday and then 24, if I go to 24, the 31st of December would be um, in 2023. So it's yellow and that's the new year 2024. So I've got the formulas on the screen here that I've used. And I'm just going to create it or recreate part of it down here so you can see how it works. I'll start in this little cell, give myself a little data validation list. So if I go in there, say list, I'll just type... 2022, comma 2023, comma 2024. That'll do. Whatever list you want, you might have more than that, but that gives me that little list, little drop down list. And then underneath that, uh, I'll give myself a space. I'll just go Sunday to Saturday, just pull that over. Oops, missed it. Pull that over to Saturday. And then I want to use the sequence function to generate a sequence of dates this sort of stuff now i've um, if you click on this one or look at look at this i've done 53 and 7 so 53 rows and seven columns but i'll just do the sequence fun function by itself first off so it equals sequence so how many rows do i want let's just go for five and how many columns seven now, the rest of it, the start and stop, I don't need to do just yet. Let me just try this. So that just drops a series of numbers in. Now, these are not formatted correctly, so I need to go and format these back to home. Or you can do Control-1, that'll get format cells on the screen, whichever you want to do. They want to be date. Now, if I click OK to that, they're coming up with a date like that because I didn't pick a start number, I've just said that. Now, if I have a start number... What I can do is use the date function, which you can see there. Now, before I do that, let me just show you what the date function will do by itself. So if I come down here and just go equals date, open brackets. So if I click on that cell, comma, one, first month, first day, just press enter on that. That's coming up with the first of the first 24 because that says 24. If I put that back to 23, that's saying 2023. That's what the date function does. So that can be used as my starting point for this sequence function. So if I get myself up there, do a comma, and then put the date function in. So type date, open the bracket, click on the cell I want. So in this case, I want this cell actually. So I'll click on that one. There's nothing in that at the minute, so I'll have to put something in it. So I've got the date, comma, I want the first month, first day. So that's the, the date function. Then I need to close a bracket on that. Tick that. And then that cascades that across. So there's no date there. But as soon as I put a date in there, 23, that comes up with the 1st of January 2023. Now, this is not formatted how I want it to be. So if I just select that and change the formatting, again, I can do Control-1 to get into format cells and go to custom and just edit this slightly so I don't want the year on it so I just want it like that day day month month and if I had to want three letters three M's for the month okay to that and then it's the same as this now the rest of this is using the weekday because it just happens that the first of January was a Sunday but if I change that to 2022 the 1st of January was not a Sunday so I need to make this see that that is not correct so what I need to do now is there's the first part of this function okay everything's going okay but now I need to do this weekday function and put the date function that we've just done inside of it so what does a weekday function do so if I come down here do today's date control semicolon is today's date so the weekday function, if I go equals weekday, 
and then click on that date and then just finish that off it says today is ch is two now if you wanted that to change from that you can go up there do a comma and then you get a whole list of options so if you wanted this to if you put two so it defaults to the top one sunday through to saturday if you put a two there you'd be starting on monday with the number one and through to sunday number seven so me personally i don't know why that's not default i think it should be but never mind i'm not going to put anything in there i'm just showing you that that's what that what you can do with that that's why it comes up with a two because it's it's monday today it was sunday yesterday so let's get rid of that i'll get rid of that as well so i'm just showing you what they do this is the weekday that part of the function that i need to add in and it's got the date function sitting inside it as well i've already showed you what the date function is going to do so up here i need to get inside of this bracket and do a minus weekday press my tab key to get that then date tab key to get the bracket and then i'm clicking on the same date comma one comma one closing that bracket for the date function and closing the bracket for the weekday function now it says there look plus one comma one so comma one is the step value for the sequence but plus one what's that about i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that off for a minute comma one should end the sequence if i go tick so that's put that there so for 2022 so let's go to 2023 so you see that's first of january should be the sunday so what that's what that plus one is doing so if i get myself in there just knock this forward slightly so i'll get in front of that comma get myself in front of that comma plus one tick there you go so that's what that plus one does so that is the formula that you need to do to get this now if i change this sequence it say it's on if i go to 15 rows let's have a look this just cascades itself down obviously it's not all formatted so i'm going to format it all to the same in fact i could just click on that use the format painter to be honest all right so everything's formatted how i want it got a few months worth of stuff there but if I go back to 2022, this um, I want this colouring up. So these are dates that are in 2021 and, and and that one, 31st. All of those, I want those to shade up. So this is the conditional formatting that I've done. So if I highlight the whole set, I haven't gone down like I have on this one to the very bottom. So you see it's automatically colouring up there if it's not in the year if it's not in the current year that's selected at the top there but what i'll do is i'll just do this um this function um here so if it's not equal to that year that's displayed there i want it to color up now that's conditional formatting manage rules new rule and i'm going to use the formula option right so this this is the formula but obviously i'm using that cell instead of c1 so equals c1 dollar sign that's okay if c1 uh, this has got to return either true or false so you've got to watch what you put in here less than greater than and i can see there that i'm using the year function for the first cell in this list or this range so a year open the bracket on the year function click on the top cell it's put dollar signs in again and it does that when you're doing formulas in conditional formatting but i'm just going to press f4 three times to take that off close that bracket so that is the same as that just check that's the same then you select your format in this case i'll go for gray and then click ok ok and apply that rule and then that just gives you that top line gray so those are the only ones now if i close this for a minute click ok to that if i change this back to 2023 because Sunday was the 1st of January, nothing is showing in grey. 2024, just one day, Sunday the 31st of December. Now, the other thing I want to do is colour up. So I've got January, February, March. I want to colour up each of these months. So I'm using the month function for that. And again, I'm using the top left-hand cell. 
without dollar signs on it. If I go into conditional formatting, uh, manage rules, then that's that one we just did. So I'll put it up there. New rule, formula option. I'm using the month function, so it's equals month. Open the bracket, clicking on the top left hand cell, pressing F4 three times to get rid of the dollar signs. Now, if it equals one, I want it a particular color. So I'll go orange, okay to that, okay to that. And new rule, formula option equals month, open bracket, click the top left hand one. Press F4 to get the dollar signs off, so you need this to be dynamic. Equals 2, format a different colour. Go for light blue. OK, OK, and the last one. I know I've got four months there, but you get the idea. I'm just doing three. New rule. Formula option equals month. Open the bracket. Click on the top left hand cell f4 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 close equals three pick a different color format uh meeny meeny miny mo pink okay 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 so now you've got some colors there and obviously you do one for april as well you can see the color changes if i change that back to 2022 it's grayed out because that's not equal to the year those aren't and the rest of the colors are okay and then 2024 only one cell is grayed out and the rest of the colors okay so that's just a quick example is how you can create your own little calendar using the sequence function the date function the weekday function and the month function with the year function in conditional formatting to get some colors so hopefully that video is of use for you thank you for your time and i'll catch you on the next one